a rough thing to uh, experience so many different uh, emotions, so many different things, so many different stirrings of the spirit to try to actually put them into words and explain and get something out of your heart. So, you know, uh, grateful that I got a wife that understands and he understands that like, you know, when I'm going to be sharing, I ain't much about talking, especially the morning of, I just, I just, I just don't, you know, I just, I just want to stay in his presence and, and uh, she helps me a lot, and I want to also want to thank Pastor Kent and Pastor Liz for letting me share, because that's a big deal, you know. Uh, I've I've experienced some things in my life, and um, some of the things I have experienced, um, I know how they've just totally changed my life. So. They're like vital things that I have to get out to other people, that I have to share to other people. Um, and, you know, it also makes way because whenever we share with other people, whenever we put in other people, then that makes room for God to pour more into us. You know, if we just take in and take in and take in and take in and you don't let it out, after a while you just become like, like a stagnant pond. You ever saw a pond that just was stagnant? You didn't have any fresh water in it. I mean, that's how you can become. So we got to let it out. We got to let it out. So it's just, it's just wild because every time I know I'm going to get a chance to share, then God just does wild ways of like pouring into me different things and he gives me uh, things at different times, and I just have to look back and say, wow, man, you know, sometimes you think, well, you got to really prepare. You got to spend hours and hours and hours in prayer, and you got to just, you got to not eat for a month and all this stuff so you can share the word and, and all this. But what's wild is sometimes, like in one night, God can just, in a few moments, like I woke up one night and I was like, what is this? And he was just telling me all this stuff, and I just started writing it down, and then I realized, okay, well, that was for today, you know. So you're going you're gonna to get it, and it's, uh, um, I've, been, I've been, like, listening to this song, like, all week long. Uh, it's an older song, um, but the song is called Dare to Move. And the whole song, there's a video that goes with it. And um, in the song, the, the guys just basically, you see, this, you see this picture of this guy that is, um, he starts off getting up off the floor because sometimes in our life, that's how low we get. You get so low. Yes. <laughs> it's just hard to get up off the floor. And then this video, um, it shows this guy as he gets up off the floor and then as he starts moving. Because after you get up off the floor, it doesn't do you good. You just get up off the floor. you got to figure out a way then to start moving. Because sometimes you're just stuck right there. You're just stuck right in that place. And, you, and you're just trying to figure out how you're going to proceed from this point on. And I know we've all been there. I've been there at times where I was just stuck. And it's not a fun place to be. Well, in this video and in this song, this guy just starts moving and he starts running. And as he's running, you know, it's kind of like a cry from God saying, I just dare you to move. I dare you to move. Because when you start moving and you start trusting him, then he puts, he puts power behind your move. And it's not just you. It's a big difference. You trying to do it on your own. You're just trying to, you're trying to dig yourself out on your own. It, it, it's it's a hard hard thing to do. And and there's no there's no power behind it. And um, so in this video, you see this guy and he's running. And and as he's running, he's he's you see him and, and everybody else is coming the other direction. 
they're all coming at him. And as he's running and, and starting to pick up speed, he, you know, he's starting to do better, but then it's like they, they crowd in on both sides and he starts ke catching shoulders with them as he's plowing through, you know. And a few different times he, like, gets knocked down, but he gets back up, and then he just keeps going and until and, and he gets to the end, and you know, and he, then he's finally out in the, out in the clear. And that, that process can be tough. And if you're trying to do it on your own, it's pretty close to impossible. So um, back a couple of years ago, I, I, was in, I was in service here one morning and I saw this. And I, I think I shared it one time before, but I just, this goes perfectly. I just got a new, like, fresh thing that I got out of it. You ever gotten something from God? And then you just kind of shelved it for a little while, and you're like, I don't know what that means, and this and that. And then every once in a while, you, that's why it's good to write it down. And then you pick it back up, and then all of a sudden, God just breathes life into something, and all of a sudden, you, you get a fresh revelation of something that you see, and it changes your life, right? I mean, it just changes your life. Okay, so this was back in 2020. Um, ninth month on the 27th day and um, in worship I, I saw a bunker like a war zone and many Christians were hunkered down in the bunker while the war was going on many were saying I'm not afraid inside of them they're saying I'm not afraid but they were yet they were hiding in the bunker as they peeked out and saw many horrible things going on around them, people being hurt, bombs, and lots of wildfire. Their hearts were breaking because they had so much fear it was holding them down. They were looking down at all their failures. They were looking at their previous injuries. They were being consumed by condemnation and shame. Anybody ever been there? I have. I felt like God was saying, look up. And when they did, they saw Jesus reaching down. They saw him reaching down and he started pulling them out of the bunker and leading them to battle. And as they climbed out, healing took place in their bodies. Guilt and shame fell off and boldness was injected into them as they stepped out. Do you know why? It was the hand of the master that pulled them out. And there's power in Jesus. And much yelling and charging the enemy took place after this. As soon as they got out of the bunker, many came out limping and injured, but yet they still came out and they still grabbed his hand. And as they did, um, people went to high speed attack. Radical change, radical change from one touch. One touch, she was talking about one touch change your life. As they did, the injuries went away, totally healed, and all fear left them. And they were moved in the power of God. God. Some people do say God. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> I saw violent motion towards the enemy. I felt in my spirit like Jesus was saying, I got you covered, go and get them. People in your life that you know you've wanted to ask them if you could pray for them and you haven't. Look up to Jesus. Step out and do it. But I'm injured myself. Step out and be healed today while you're healing others. But I've got hang-ups. I, I can't seem to get past. Look up into the eyes of Jesus. 
and you're going to find fire. Take his hand. He'll drag you out, run you into battle. True soldiers never stop fighting just because they got shot. So what I noticed in this was what I felt like happened, what God showed me was when, um, when they come in contact with Jesus, the fire of the Holy Ghost hit them. And I don't know how many of you have ever had the fire of the Holy Ghost hit you, but I'm, it messes with the flesh. The flesh has to give because the flesh can't not stand. It just cannot handle the power of God. Change occurs with the fire of God. I want to start in Luke 3, 15 through 17, if you guys can put that up. So I believe the secret of running against the flow of the world is the fire of the Holy Ghost. Okay, we're going to do 3, 15 through 17. Now as the people were in expectation and all reasoned in their hearts about John. This is when John the Baptist was baptizing people one of the times. Whether he was the Christ or not, John answered saying to them, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming whose sandal straps I am not worthy to loose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He was, he was a starter of something and he knew he was coming and he knew that what kind of power was coming with Jesus. Let's go to Acts 1, 4 through 8. One, four, three, eight. Yep. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me. For truly John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. Can you get to verse 9? I think I left one out. I know we're at 8. Oh, let's go back to 8. I missed something. They were too fast for me. (laughs) But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. You, you, now you can go back to eight. That's all right. So it looks to me like here, it's very obvious that the reason that you receive this power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, what does it say? You shall be my witnesses. So there had to be some, there had to be an injection like I told you in this in this thing that I saw there was an injection of power into people to to be witnesses so this was before now we're going to go to Acts 2 1 through 4 when the day of Pentecost had fully come They were all there in one accord in one place. And suddenly there was a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. 
Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So here we have another picture of fire. It was like fire. They they say it was like fire over their heads. And a lot of wild stuff happened. They all began to speak in tongues. And then there was a lot of people freaking out because they were hearing, you know, they were speaking in tongues, but what the people were hearing was was, uh, languages like in their own dialect. So they were understanding what they were saying, and they were hearing about the marvelous things of God and all this stuff. And they were hearing it in their own languages. And it was just an awesome, powerful move of God. And, it, 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 you know, what happened was people didn't understand what was going on. And they're freaking out. And they're like thinking, There's something, these people, they must be drunk. They must be drunk. That's the way they're acting. They're just crazy. They're just drunk. So let's go to Acts. 2, 14. So Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For there are not... the These... Oh, this is going to be good. For these are not drunk, as you supposed, but they, but it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in these days, and they shall prophesy. Wild things happen when the fire of God is in in the where you're at. The fire of God will change you. The fire of God will change you. One of the things that happens is, um, I know nobody's ever heard of somebody doing this, but I, I have, I've never did it, but I've heard of people like setting the tail of an animal on fire just to see what they did. You ever, it's terrible. I know it's bad. <laughs> but I've heard of people doing it. So what, what's going to happen when you set, say you had a fox and you, and you set their tail on fire, what are they going to do? Are they just here? Are they just going to go, oh, that's, that's really hot and that's nice. And I'm just going to sit here and enjoy this. No, no, it's going to cause them to run. It's going to cause them to run. They're in, in, uh, the wild thing about it is, is when they start running around, depending on where they run, they can spread other fire around different places. So when the fire of God is on somebody, you know, I believe the main reason it gets on them is to spread it to other people. You know, to start this huge a huge fire because you know i i believe you know if if we did we did just received christ and we'd have had him in us it'd have been great but obviously he thought we needed something else he he told the he told all of his followers to wait he told them to wait and they waited until the Holy Spirit and the fire of God fell in the place, and they were injected with something that was raging on the inside of them that changed them, changed their lives forever. They became really radical. They, they're, they're, the fear of man seemed to just fall off of them. 
I mean, you got to realize they were running what they were scared of and hiding from. Up to that point, they were hiding all the time. Look it up in the scriptures. They were hiding. They were hiding. They were hiding. They were even denying that they knew Jesus. But after this day, everything changed. Everything changed. They just started running right at the enemy from that point on. And they knew the price, but they were injected with this Holy Ghost fire. Uh, I got to give you two more scriptures. I'm going to share some things. Jeremiah 20, verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name, but his word was in my heart like burning fire shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back, and I could not. So when you got the fire of God, and you got his presence raging on the inside of you, uh, you know, you can't hold it back. You got to tell somebody. You really believe in what you say you believe in? I mean, you can come in here and just tell and just let God do all kinds of stuff in you. But if you get up and you never go out and affect the world, what, what was it for? You, it was pretty selfish. I mean, yeah, it feels good. feels good. I love having him living on the inside of me. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. We, we, we got to have something going on inside of us. You know, we have to keep a raging fire on the inside of us. Otherwise, when we go try to talk to the world, they're not too interested. You're not too excited about what's going on inside of you. You're not even telling me everything. Why, why didn't you tell me about this Holy Ghost and fire? You know, th this, this, this could change me. Revelation 19, 12 through 15. I just want to show you. This is, this is talking about Jesus. If it's okay for him to burn, it's okay for us to burn, right? Yeah. His eyes were like a flame of fire and his head were, were many crowns and he had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in the blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, and that with it, he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the wine presses of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. I have experienced the fire of God in my life in some pretty wild ways at different times. I fought it. I fought it. I went into a service years ago and and uh, saw this guy in there who who seemed almost breathe fire, it seemed like. But I was so skeptical that when he went around and laid hands on people that I was just sure he was pushing them down, that God wasn't doing anything. He's just pushing them over. And I fought against it. I fought against it. So one night, me and a buddy of mine, we were there, and we were like, all right, we're going up. We're going forward. We're going forward to see what this fire God stuff's about. We're going to find out if this is real or not. I had it all planned. You know, I'm going up there. He's not pushing me over this this. Left foot's going here, and this one's going here. I'm bracing myself. Well, that night, during worship, 
I never even made it to the line to get prayed for. I was up, I was up in one of the front rows off to the side, and all of a sudden, just on the inside of me, I mean, I was hungry. I was hungry for God, you know. And you've got to be hungry for God if you want the fire of God because, because when the fire comes, there's going to be some stuff that's going to come to the surface that you have to let go. You've got to make a decision whether you want all of God in you, if you want him burning in you, or if you want to stay partially in the world. Because if you want to stay partially in the world, it's just not going to work out good for you. But if you're really hungry enough and you want him to fill you to full capacity, then then he's got it for you. I mean, he's got it. And and he, he wants to rage in you. So, quite a few nights ago, I just, I got up, man. I was like, I had this burning thing on the inside of me, and I was just like, all right, all right, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to write it down. And God was saying, telling me to get back in the fire. Yeah, that that night, let me go back and finish my story. Because that night, I was up there and I'm in worship. And I'd been crying out to God. I'm like, I want, I want you more than anything. You know, I'm desperate for you, God. I, I want what you have for my life. I don't care about going through a life just, just average, God. I want everything you have for me. And I was in, as I was in my chair... Um, all of a sudden I just started just crying, just weeping and crying and weeping and crying. And it wasn't like a normal cry. It was like from down, down deep inside of me, I started just crying and crying and crying. And I, I couldn't like stop. And when I finally did stop, then I had this down inside my belly things start happening just started coming up on the inside of me this joy that I'd never experienced before and it started coming up inside of me and I start I began to laugh and as I did I noticed that couldn't really explain it but I was I was being filled but I didn't know what I was doing I was just like I can't and I tried to stop laughing. I started fighting and trying to start. And the more I tried to stop laughing, the harder I laughed. And I laughed so hard that I was like leaning over this pew. And it felt like my face was on the floor. And every time I try to pull to get up, then I would just laugh all the harder. And I couldn't stop. I was trying. I couldn't stop. I couldn't. When I'd, I'm like, well, it doesn't do any good to raise up because when I start to raise up, it just comes on me harder. But I was hungry. I was hungry. I wanted something from God. Well, this buddy of mine standing next to me, and he's like, dude, stop. You're embarrassing me. Well, that just made it all the worse. I just kept... I just kept laughing all the more. And it's coming up from down in here somewhere. And it was like, it was like I was laughing and then I was laughing at myself. And then it just kept coming. It just kept boiling up on the inside of me. And uh, didn't you see me have that problem at home one morning? You come in and checked on me and asked me if I was okay. Yeah. 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 Had the same thing happen one morning. I woke up and it just, it came on me and I was getting there crying and he was checking on me. Then I'm laughing and then I'm like, I'm like trying to put, I'm trying to put my boots on. And I was plastered. I mean, I was plastered in the spirit. I'm going to tell you, there is a fire of God 
That is the real thing. It's the real thing. And what he, what's good about it is it gets inside of you and all kinds of things just seem to happen. People get healed. People have all kinds of stuff, stuff broke off of them to where they can run again. All these great things happen and they get this supernatural boldness on the inside of them. All of a sudden it's like they will preach to anything that they see is breathing all of a sudden. What is that? It's the fire of God came and, and some spit that flew out right there. Did you see it? Dangerous place to be in the front when somebody starts talking about the fire of God because spit can fly. So I got to hurry. I got to hurry. Boy, this is fun. I like this. So I stayed like that the whole night. The whole night, I mean, I, I just got worse and worse and worse till I was just laying around. And I mean, I was, I, I'm telling you, I was trashed in the Holy Ghost. I was completely trashed. And it was the real stuff. It was like, so good. There's nothing this world has to offer as, as the Holy Spirit and his fire. I mean, it comes on me. So this buddy of mine, he just wore out trying to get me to stop, you know. So at the end of the night, I guess he had something to prove. So he got in line. And I don't even know if the guy even touched him, and he hit the floor. Now picture me, I'm laying up here somewhere. He hits the floor, and at some point, he realizes he's stuck duck to the floor and he was trying with all he had to get up and God was doing something on the inside of him so instead of him just sitting there receiving it what's he start doing he starts yelling for me to come get him up I'm in the floor I mean I am gone I'm like oh no you know I'm just laughing I'm like no man they said to leave you alone you know I'm like you know and I didn't want to stop doing what I was doing because I was having massive consumption of the Holy Ghost. And it was good. And it was changing me. I didn't know it was, but it was changing me. So that was a pretty cool night there. Very interesting. Very interesting. Well, that, that really messed me up, you know, because I had some, I had some religion in me that that fought pretty hard against that. And I'm like, this can't be real. This can't be real. This can't be real. But once you've tasted, yeah. once you've tasted of the wine that he has for us, yeah. nothing else will satisfy you. Yeah. And you can't help but want somebody else to try it too. Yeah. You know? So I woke up this night, this one night, and he starts giving me this, so I'm just going to kind of give you the download of what he gave me. He told me to get back in the fire. And then he just said, no fear. Because sometimes when you've been in the fire previously and you know that you got to make changes, you, you know at some point you're going to be uncomfortable. And that's where you lose some people. They just say, I don't, I don't want it that bad. He told me to gear up and get in. I'm like, get in? You know, I mean, think back of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> they went right in. They didn't care they were in there. Because the one that came after John, who had the Holy Ghost in fire, he was right in there with them. So that's where they wanted to be. So you got to ask yourself, how bad do you want to be where he's at? How bad do you want to be where he's at? When you have the fire, you know what weapons you have and what armor you have on and you will have bold boldness to keep getting in. 
So I got a question for you. This is what he asked me. When are you going to engage with the enemy? When are you going to get tired enough to let him quit running over you when you know he has no rights? He only gets away with the stuff we let him get away with. Isn't it time you said, this is what he spoke to me, so I'm just sharing it with you. He said, isn't it time you said enough is enough knowing that you are loaded to the hilt? He's like, you know you're loaded. You know your weapons that you have. You know you've put enough word of God on the inside of you. You know what's yours. Yet you're still letting the enemy run over you. Then he gave me this stuff and I was just like, oh man, wow, wow. So he said, what does a soldier do before battle? And then he just started giving me all these things. And I'm like, these sound like points for a sermon or something. And I thought he was just, you know, but he said, what does a soldier do before battle? They get a strategy. How do you get a strategy? You get in his presence. Because all your ideas and all your great thinking isn't going to get you out of what you're into. His presence. And then he's going to tell you how to get out. Then you have to decide when you're going to move. And that goes right along with, because sometimes timing can be vital on when you do things. You know, I mean, in your own condition, you don't want to wait, but there's certain strategies, certain times. It's really important to know when to move. And that only comes from the Holy Ghost on the inside of you, giving you the information. I mean, that's the way he designed us, that he would download stuff into us and then we would move. Then the third thing he said, you need to gather weapons. Well, the weapons is the word. The word is what we fight the enemy with, getting the word on the inside of us, learning who we are in Christ, taking the time to find out who we are in Christ, finding out our authority in Christ, That's why it's vital that when you first get born again and you start, that you keep growing and learning and learning because you're learning how to fight. You don't want to just battle, you know, randomly try to battle and because you're going to get knocked around a lot. It's going to be, you got to learn some stuff. So then he said, step right on fear. And look the enemy right in the eye. That's only going to come when you got this raging fire of the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. Because you're not going to look the enemy in the eye unless you've got something going on on the inside of you that's pretty strong. That's forcing you to get up out of the chair and come up here and say something. Even when your flesh, I'm down there going, oh, my flesh don't want to do this. You know, you have to, this is something he's been really working on me about, is getting on the offensive charge. It's like getting after him with the word of God, straighten him out and just letting him know that you, you can't be pushed around because of whose you are and what he's instilled inside of you. Knowing the authority that you have brings you this increase of boldness when you get this on the inside of you. Oh, I found out. I just found out. When you just find something out, it's, it's pretty exciting. Like brand new revelation out of the Word, when you get something, it's exciting. It's like people are like looking at you like, you know, because they don't understand the intensity that you got going on on the inside. 
It's like something you have to cut loose. You've got to tell somebody, even if it sounds totally crazy. <laughs> this was one of the coolest things he told me right here. I thought it was awesome. And I was like, wow. I can't take credit for it because he told it to me, but that's awesome. He goes, you can have a stealth mode in your battle. You know how? You're hidden in his word. You're hidden in Christ. When I was on the way up here today, I was thinking, I, you know, I was like, well, come on, you know. I, I seriously was. I was like, come on, devil, ain't you going to ever razz me some? I really was expecting it. I was like, ain't you going to mess with me? Ain't you going to razz with me, you know? And he, he was just kind of, and I'm like, yeah, can't you see me, can you? I'm hidden. I'm hidden in him. I'm hidden. I'm in this place. I'm in this place. So when, when, when we're going after these things and going after the enemy when we're full, when we're full, we're going to, we're going to be letting bombs fall. And the bombs that we're dropping are the word of God. They're what has, they have the power in them. His word, Jesus, the spoken word, it's got all the firepower in it. It's got all the fire in it. And then, who? this was really good. Really, really good, man, I'm telling you. We have, have you ever heard of Patriot Missile Defense? Have you ever heard of that? Guess what this one is? We are able to take every thought captive. See if it lines up with the word of God. And if it doesn't, we can dismiss it in any given time instead of letting it get in us. Is that not like? I was like, when he said that, I was like, you're right. You're right. That's like Patriot Mitchell defense. <laughs> Every thought captive. Because they come right at us. And we're like, nope, that's not God. <laughs> you know? Are you not tired of just taking shots from the enemy? This is going to sound a little harsh, but this is the truth. He said it. So he must have been talking to me, and that was painful. He said, sometimes you receive better from the enemy than you do from me. That was a little hard to take. Let's believe in lies. Sometimes we be just, we believe lies, you know. And when we we believe a lie that isn't true with the word of God, then we're receiving, we're see, we're receiving from the enemy, you know. And it's not a good thing just to take just to take it, because sooner or later you're going to get your knees buckled if you keep taking shots. You keep believing stuff that isn't true. So he said, whose report do you believe? And then he's like, it's a really good time for you. This is what he told me. It's a really good time for you to repent right now. Why wait? So I'll say it to you guys. I mean, it's a really good time to repent for believing the lies of the enemy. And then just putting your eyes right back into them fiery eyes of Jesus. time am I supposed to be done? What time am I supposed to be done? I got some more. Okay. So, I was, this week, 
knowing this was coming up, I decided to listen to like five or six sermons from someone else on the fire of God. And he said some points in one of the things, and I was just like, wow, this is good. One of the things he said is, if you want more fire, you have to give it out. And he also said, one touch of God and his fire, and you'll never be the same. Never be the same. And they'll never be the same. I got to, I had the wildest thing happen the other day. He was going to come this morning, but he didn't make it. I had this guy come to work for me. And, and he only made it a couple days, and I had to let him go. Okay? So he was not happy. And, you know, I was feeling for him. But I could tell this guy just, he, I just knew it on the inside that he needed more than a job. So after I pretty much told him, you know, I'm going to have to let you go. Maybe we'll try this again another time or something like that. You know, went outside and I just looked at him and I was like, did I hear you say the other, other day that you used to go to church at so-and-so place and all this and that? And I just let him go, you know. So... It had to be God that he still even wanted to talk to me. Well, we go outside, and he's still interested in talking to me. And I'm like, I heard you talking the other day. I said, you know, that you go to this church. I said, so So I said, do you believe that, do you, do you believe that Jesus was who he said he was and that he had to come to, come to us to die on the cross for our sins? And I, I and he's like, yeah. And I go, so so do you believe that he was rose from the dead? And he's like, yeah. I go, did you know this? It was just as simple as this. Don't make it difficult because God, when he tells you to talk to somebody, it's time to talk to him. He will give you the word. And I just looked at him. I go, I go, well, if you believe that, I said, there's a scripture in Romans, it says that, that if you believe that and then you confess with your mouth and make, make Jesus your Lord and Savior, that you believe that and then you confess with your mouth and you make him your Lord and Savior, that you'll be saved. It's just that easy. And I go, I go, you know, you can turn from your sins, you can turn away from this and you can get all this from God. He, he'll give you Jesus. You know, you just got to accept his gift. It's as simple as that. And he still had his hard hat on from working. And I looked at him, I go, man, why wouldn't you want to just do that right now? Off the hard hat came, and he's like, yeah, let's do it. So I got to pray with him, and he received Christ right there. And uh, he's like, he's like, Oh, we got done. He's like, oh, I had chills all over me. And I go, brother, I'm going to stay. I said, you got a whole lot more than chills. I said, your, for, your life is forever changed from this point on. I said, you don't ever have to face anything in your life alone ever again. I said, he's always with you. And then I just directed him into some scriptures he could start, you know, and I uh, told him about our church, and it was just that. It was just like that. And I was just like, what that did on the inside of me was, it was just like like stirring up some coals on the inside. And I mean, it, it made this fire start raging on the inside of me because I'm telling you, when you let it out and you share with somebody else, I mean, it is a pretty huge thing to help someone escape hell. I mean, what could be any more huge? What could be any more awesome? Had to share that. So here's what the fire does. The fire burns out all the fear of man. 
and it burns out everything that holds you back. You know, rockets fire up and they defy gravity and they, where do they go? They take off. Okay? Well, the fire of God, it burns out the pull of sin in our life. And when it does that, I mean, when you got all the weights off, speed's like unlimited. It's pretty awesome. So it purges you and it makes you usable. That's what the fire of God does. It purges you and makes you useful. Because if you're going to sit around and think about all the things you're doing wrong all the time, and that's going to constantly be on you, and you're going to be walking around with shame and condemnation on you all the time, you're weighted down so bad, you're, you're only focusing on yourself. You're not going to think about going to somebody else, but the fire of God changes that in you. It causes the gospel message to get spread because you can't help but tell other people about it. Because it's, it's like... I'm going to explode if I, don't, if I don't share with somebody to that intensity. Do you know he wants us to have intensity? Have you ever been around a really intense person? Yeah, sometimes they're really annoying. I understand. But if they're... <laughs> I didn't point any fingers. When the fire comes on you, you you're going to run. You're going to run. And what's cool, just picture this, picture this, um, this fox running. Because when you run, you're going to be like that fox. And you're, you're not going to have all these fears. You're going to run right through the enemy's camp. Yeah. And what's going to happen? You got fire on that tail. You're going to burn up the enemy's plans everywhere you go. You're going to be... It's going to be awesome. The fire also protects you. You know, just like it did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Fire protects you. He protects you. Amen. I could talk on this for hours, but here's what I'm going to say. What would your life be like? He asked me these questions. So I'm going to ask you. What would you do if you really believed that I loved you unconditionally? That means no matter where you're at, he loves you. The same as he did if you were just doing great in your eyes. What would you do? How would you be different? How would you act? If you really believe that whatever you speak will come to pass. Whatever we speak. We're made in his image. He wants us to like create our world as we're going around. He wants us to change the atmosphere everywhere we go. How would you be acting if you really believed that you were healed by Christ's stripes? How would you be acting? What would be your response if you really believed that when you lay hands on the sick, that they're going to recover? Would that change your boldness factor when you went up to someone and decided to ask them if you could pray for them? If you really believed what he said was going to happen is going to happen when you laid hands on somebody? (laughs) 
Would you ever be lonely if you really believed that I will never leave you and I am in you? How can he leave us? If we've accepted him, how can he leave us? He's living on the inside of us. How bold would you be if you really believe that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, even though he says it right in his word? How bold would you be? And then he just told me, he said, I am who I have said I am, and you are who I am. I say you are.